Hey everybody, hi, it's Mama Lisa back at home in Progresso. Thank goodness. Here with my girl, Big Shell, my Mayan goddess who I believe watches over me and guides me and keeps me safe and provides spiritual ingrowth here for me um, in the Yucatan. Okay, just a real quick trip on, uh, recap on the trip. My two biggest fears when I was coming down is, one, I thought I was going to be driving on two-lane roads, like one each direction. I'd be going through areas that were unsafe and um, potentially road hazards where they blocked the road or put things out in the road to get you to stop or cars broken down or whatever, and that the, the bandits or the banditos would uh, rob you, you know, or kidnap you. And then crossing the border. I had no idea. I'd never crossed the border before and driven into Mexico. Um, so the first thing was, it's not dangerous, okay? I mean, use common sense. But uh, the drive through Mexico is rough. I, I say living here that Mexico is not for sissies. Well, let me tell you, the drive is definitely not for sissies. Um, I, uh, most of the lanes, the roads are two or three lanes. There's hundreds and hundreds of 18 wheelers, no question. So, you know, you get 18 wheelers over in the fast lane to block it. You get them over in the slow lanes and block it. And when these guys change lanes, they put the signal on and they go. They don't wait for you to pass or look or, you know, they just do it. So these 18-wheelers are definitely a hazardous thing to be around. You have to really pay attention all the time. So you have the three lanes, supposedly one for fast. There really isn't any speed limit in Mexico. I mean, it'll say 90 kilometers or 100 kilometers, but everybody's going 110 or 120 kilometers. So the fast lane is really going. The middle lane is supposedly if you're just going through, and the slow lane is for slow vehicles. Not only the trucks, but the cars in Mexico are really dumpy at times. They can be hazardous as well. They shouldn't be on the road, but they are. So the traffic, uh, driving really, really um, is aggressive. Um, we were never on any two-lane roads that were unsafe or that I felt, geez, we shouldn't be here. I mean, I brought a complete breakdown kit for my car. Got a brand new spare tire, and I had a five-gallon gas can. Well, I didn't need any of that stuff, really. We were always in populated areas or areas where there was lots of traffic. I usually filled up the gas tank three times a day. Um, when I stopped for gas, I would use the bathroom, get a drink, stretch a little bit, and go. And we drove six, seven hours a day. Um, it was me and my um, travel companion um, ended up just going to two of us because our third friend that we met who was going to go with us ended up getting stopped at the border because she had a brand new truck and it was temporary registration. Although it had permanent plates on it from Vermont, it said temporary registration on it and they wouldn't let her in. Um, so she got turned around at the border. Um, at the border we crossed at is Eagle Pass, Texas. Um, three lanes. It wasn't uh, busy or lined up or anything. Uh, I did get stopped there or red lighted. They have random red lights just like they do at the airport. Take you aside. I had a plant um, that was my husband's. <laughs> it was called a Roger Lily. And I thought, oh, hell, they're going to take that. I had some vapes in my car. I thought that they would take my vapes. Um, they really opened up the back and saw how packed and crammed it was. And they, they were just like, oh, God, we don't want to do this. They looked in the passenger compartment, driver's compartment, everything, and then they just told me it was $50, like an import tax on all the stuff I had. None of it was new. But it was really surprising to me that I could have had guns or drugs or anything like that packed in there, and they wouldn't have found them. They really didn't even look. No drug dogs or anything. So getting across the border was easy. Paid the 50 bucks. Then um, 
went over to the administration building and I had um, my papers for my my car, the insurance, the title, the registration, stuff like that, showed that to him. I am a temporary resident. Everything went smoothly there. I paid $220 because my car is so old for the, the TIP, the TIP, Temporary Import Vehicle Permit or something. And um, so after I was there for about two hours um, with my resident card and my TIP, uh, we were on our way. Um, the one girl, like I said, she got turned around, couldn't go back, had to go back to San Antonio. Her name is uh, Sissy Bradford. And uh, it turns out that we were not going to be able to spend six or seven days on the road together. Anyway, even my travel companion, um, Megan, said, oh, my God, we could not travel with her. She wanted to stop every hour because she has medical problems and needed to pee and she had a dog and a cat. No, we couldn't have done that. So anyway, you don't want to be stopping all the time either because you become a potential target if you're being followed or anything else. But most of these roads were very populated. Uh, gasoline was easy to get. Every time we got down to like a quarter of a tank, we found a gas station and filled up. The hotels were very nice. Uh, go on to Hopper or Hotels.com. If you find a three-star hotel, that's really good for Mexico. They're really nice and they're safe and they were like 30 to $40 a night. Um, other than the driving, it's hard. It's aggressive. You have to be, oh, your vehicle, make sure your vehicle is in good shape. I mean, make sure your front end is good. You have good shocks and struts, get new shocks on the back if you can, because these roads are terrible. The potholes, the deterioration of the surfaces and the topes or the speed humps, your car is going to take a beating. Now, I had all of my stuff fixed before I left, thank goodness, and I'm glad I did because it, it would have been bad otherwise. And still getting here, I'm going to take it to my mechanic and have him make sure everything's tightened up and looks good. Um, so the hotels, the driving, the border crossing, it was a long, hard day, but it was beautiful. We went through desert areas. We went through mountainous areas. I mean, it was really a good um, trip along that route um, coming across at Eagle Pass. We came down through two areas that was sort of like cartel area. We didn't see anything bad at all. We didn't see any bad guys or bad people or anything different that I see every day here in Progresso. So anyway, um, plan on driving six hours a day maybe and staying at uh, the hotels.com or Hopper Hotels, three stars, uh, gas up when you get down to about a quarter of a tank. Make sure your car is in good condition and probably only have two people, two vehicles to drive with because if you have any more than that, you're, you know, everybody has to go to the bathroom at different times or they need gas at different times or they might have a flat tire or different hotels or whatever it may be. Stick together. It's a good idea to stick together, but try to find somebody that can uh, follow a good schedule like you, and you'll have a great trip. It was really nice. The person I had was wonderful. She was from Canada. We'd never met before. The one person that we would have come with was from Vermont in the U.S., and it just would not have worked at all. Um, she's never even been here to Mexico, and she was giving all kinds of advice and everything. I said, look, I've been coming here 11 years, and I've lived here now a year and a half. I, I know a little bit more. I got my temporary residency and everything else, but she was going to be very difficult. Uh, once again, I don't know if you run into her. Her name is uh, Sissy Bradford, or Sissy Fuss, S-I-S-I, -S Bradford. And I'm sure she's going to bad mouth me because <laughs> I was like, I'm not having any of this stuff. It's a blind leading the partially blind here. I'm not, no, no way. I'm partially blind, but she's totally blind. Anyway, so just follow the, that advice that I give you. You should have a great time. Cell phone service was great. I had cell phone service and internet or uh, Wi-Fi. I have um, like AT&T. It was great. It was a good trip. Wonderful to be back. This was really good to be back home. And I would do it again. If somebody had a vehicle to drive down here, 
I wouldn't drive with them in the same vehicle. <laughs> I mean, I like to smoke and, you know, listen to my own radio stations and everything, go my own speed. Um, but I would definitely drive another car down here for a trip for somebody. It would be pretty cool. Okay, well, it's great to be home. I love you guys so much, and it feels so good to finally make the big move. So send me a message. If you have any questions, just PM me, and I'll talk to you soon. I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks. Bye.